us in a place that we should not have to be. Um, but we need to have these conversations and we have to find a way to do it, so I share those things that I've learned in that regard. But it's not to blame individuals. The companies have all the power, but they don't have all of the power every minute. We have power too, and we deprive ourselves of agency every time we do this. Every time we go down the road, it's the companies, it's the this, it's the this. We have agency, we need to exercise our agency, we need to participate in this process. So that's the best I can offer. I just add, Janice mentioned transportation and looking at it on a sort of community basis. Imagine Fredericton as a place where um, driving your car around town would become the exception and getting around town otherwise, whether it's transit or biking or walking or whatever, uh, would be more the norm. Imagine a city like that. Now, can we work together to bring that about? I don't know. We can't even get the snow dug out of our bus stops. So, so uh, but, but imagine that. Um, there's a collective project that would make a huge difference um, and transportation is one of the, the toughest ones to get at in terms of getting the emissions down um, uh, because you've got so many people involved. It's not just a refinery or a few power plants. So, so uh, think about that. What a great collective project that would be for Fredericton to improve transit and make this a city one that uh, is uh, the active transportation capital of Eastern Canada. I mean. That's tangible, that's something that relates directly to people. And uh, I've seen people get excited just about uh, working on a pedway across the old Trans Canada from Skyline Acres to the UNB. So yeah, I think there is something there um, that, uh, that we can work, work on. But again, it needs leadership at the municipal level or at the, at the community level uh, to make that happen. But there's, a, there's an idea. I just wanted to add that uh, we are asked how to sell this and to focus on water. Um, I've been asked what would be the cost of this deficit spending thing that I recommending as a national plan, um, how to sell that. Um, and I think actually, um, what about short-term pain for long-term gain? That, 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 that might work because this investment actually, once you've got this renewable power, What's the what's the extra marginal cost? That's a nice economic term. What's the marginal cost of a kilowatt? It's free. It's free at that point. Once you've got the solar and you've got the wind in there, you are you've suddenly gotten to this place where your energy is free. So that surely is a high selling point. And I think that goes <coughs> as a nice kind of incentive that, that kind of overcomes a problem that we haven't mentioned yet which is that even if we do get things right in New Brunswick, there's still China and India and all of those. I mean, so it's, this, it's called free, the free rider effect in economics, that it's, it doesn't matter what we do. That's not going to affect the climate at all. What matters is what the Chinese do and what the Indians do. But one way of overcoming that way of looking at it is this free energy, you know, let's get the jobs, let's get the expertise, and let's uh, face this uh, short-term pain for this long-term free energy future. Do our bit, because if we don't do it, the one great thing that, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, cool, <laughs> show, my, show my age, that, that Justin Trudeau said, he said, um, uh, if not now, when? If not us, who? Well, that was really well said. I mean, we've got to do our bit. And uh, be an example. Just to follow up, if I'm asking my question after you mentioned India and China, which is what I was going to ask you. Would you have something to leave us that is positive? Is there, for instance, one province in Canada that is doing something really great, or is there a country or somewhere where we can look for examples of people who are? really doing something about this because the, the whole conversation tonight you've given us a lot of food for thought and some excellent uh, excellent presentations it really did but i wonder if there's anything positive to talk about so i mean in canada let's start with british columbia um, there's a lot going on in british columbia they just and in fact in quebec i mean the greatest social consensus for action on climate change is in quebec 
Um, they have the electric vehicle mandate. BC just adopted an electric vehicle mandate. If you were going to pick one policy to work on, work on um, the vehicle piece of it, banning the internal combustion engine. It may sound boring, but it will be the thing that eliminates oil production. Um, and so the, both of those provinces have, have a fantastic uh, programs and they're using their carbon pricing revenues uh, to invest both uh, in different ways, some tax reductions in BC, but also programs, um, and in a lot of investment um, in, um, uh, in, in Quebec. What's interesting about both those provinces is they're hydro provinces, and so their emissions are from transportation, and they're going right at it. Um, and so I think there's there's something to, to kind of look forward to there. In terms of countries, you know, there's there's lots to be up and down about um, in terms of the large emerging economies. Um, but you need to look at things, you know, uh, 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 in that scale. So China's commitments to renewable energy are bigger than the entire electricity system of the U.S. It's huge. Um, so their investments are having some of the biggest influence on the price of renewable energy around the world. Their manufacturing sector is growing. Um, their population is increasingly reacting to air pollution issues and demanding um, action. Um, and China, what's, you know, there's some things to be said about we ruled it, it's happening. Um, now, I'm not saying I believe everything that you hear about China, but there's a lot there that we could be uh, fascinated by in terms of what's gonna happen there. There's so much happening at the municipal level, um, and especially you'll see in um, uh, cities and countries around the world, even in Canada, there are thing, great things happening um, at the municipal level. Um, if I were to pick a country that I would say is maybe further down the road on things, certainly on the, for me, as I said, it's electricity that I care about. I'm thinking Denmark, um, and especially they're integrated there regionally, and there's a lot of very interesting things going on in the Scandinavian countries. Uh, Germany, they've made the whole transition part of their industrial strategy. Still too many things going on with coal. I'm not going to defend. Uh, Germany and run some of those things, but immense investments on the industrial side. Um, so there's lots going on in the world that's that's very exciting. The problem with Canada, and this is why we need to have these conversations, is we have this denial going on about the transition that's going on in this world, um, and we're trying to pretend that we can protect the fossil fuel sector while we reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It's a not we can't tie, right? We can't do it, and it's leading us down a path um, that's just going to hurt workers, that's just going to make the transition more difficult. Um, but we do have real leadership um, in the country. Um, it's fallen a little bit away from where we were, um, but it's not an all bad. It's not an all bad news story at all. I think when I was at the Paris Climate Summit in 2015, I was amazed at how seriously uh, countries, many countries, were taking this whole idea of the transition um, compared to the way, you know, kind of the soup we've been living in about this. Re remarkable, quite, quite matter-of-factly, and the Nordic countries, collectively in, in particular, uh, are worth looking at. Um, there seems to be broad consensus, and they talk about it all the time, both, uh, and, and including at the political level, about, about a green transition. And the Nordic countries are cooperating on this, which is fascinating. Five Nordic countries, they, they have something called the Nordic Council, where parliamentarians from each of the uh, uh, five countries meet twice a year to set out an agenda. One of their big priority focuses has been this green transition and the various sort of dimensions of it for a number of years now. So, uh, so uh, check out the Nordic Council and uh, see what's going on there, because it's quite inspiring. There was a, a woman who worked for many years with the Nordic Council who came to Fredericton to give a presentation on this last year. And uh, it was just fascinating. We kind of live in a little bubble sometimes, you know, and, and, uh, and forget what's going on or don't see what's going on in the rest of the world. And, and that was inspiring. So check it out.